it was a bad loss, but you know what I think? Nobody don't care! Okay, we haven't had one of these videos in a while, go ahead. Hi! Victory puppy! I have no idea what I'm doing. God, you're there, it's just a lead! This team is ruining my life! Before you scream, let me let me do a thing, okay? Uh, let me see, I haven't done one of these. Uh, Ridge Wallets, that's what it says on the website, okay? It says here they're indestructible, they come in all kinds of color. Oh, I like the blue one, I'm gonna get one of these. Hurry it up so I can be mad! Ridge Wallets, I'm gonna order one upstairs while Steve wakes up the neighbors. Leafs lose 3-1 to the Calgary Flames. Go on! Oh, I'm sorry, am I not in the right place? Oh heavens, I'm so sorry I appear to be mistaken. I thought this was returns. Because I have come to reclaim my Monday night, and I brought receipts! Four shots in the first period? Oh, ten shots in the third, you big scary monster! Don't let the one zero in that column distract you from the fact that it wasn't even a one until about three quarters of the way through the period of a game they were losing at home! You stink on ice! Literally! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! You'll win without him again. You just stunk. My wife, my darling wife, who believe me is not gonna get any sleep until this is done, said, well, they're not gonna win every game. Uh, I'm a Leafs fan, I know. But there's such a thing as losing with dignity. At least turning in a good effort. Looking like you were in the thing. And looking like you showed up prior to five minutes left. Oh, the refs, the refs, the refs, nothing. Yeah, I thought they were kind of bad. But don't cry about it, they were regular bad. It's not even noteworthy. You should say something when they're good. Yeah, it did get to the point where I was like, what are the Leafs gotta do to get a call? But at the same point, if that Mark Giordano call got called against the Leafs. Trust me, the roof would have been torn off that building. Let's start in the third period, I suppose. That's really where this game began, isn't it? Zach Hyman gets the interference call against Rasmus Anderson. I I guess. We talked about this a lot last season. It wasn't that big of an infraction, but it affected possession of the puck. The ref has to call it. Anderson goes down, Hyman gets the puck because no one's on him, and then he scores. That would have been a controversy even bigger, I think. Elias Lindholm across to Sean Monahan scores. And there you go. The Leafs are now down one to nothing. And it's almost like after Freddie tried to score in the last game, the Leafs said, all right, you want to do it all? We'll let you do it all. Uh-oh, we're down to goal. Freddie, get out there and tie this thing up. Not even a minute later, the Leafs have time and space. Not just any Leafs. Babcock goes to the new top pair of Morgan Riley and Jake Gardner, something that a lot of fans have been screaming for for a long time. There's a lot of skill there, all right? Morgan goes for the pass to Marner. <laughs> nope. Gaudreau's got the puck. Elias Lindholm does not exist. He is a rumor. He is a government conspiracy. No one's ever even heard of him. Who's got Lindholm? What are you talking about, Lindholm? He's on our team. Not him, you idiot. The other one. Go get him. Two nothing goal right there. He blasted past Freddie, who, in fairness, should have been at the other end of the ice trying to tie it up. Less than five minutes left. Like I mentioned, the Leafs get that hilarious two man advantage. Giordano shoving Tavares right into the post. Marner, six. Sauce Boss over to Nazem Kadri, scoring in three straight games. Hey, not bad. And part of me, oh, I, mmm, mm, this stupid Leafs part of me thought they were gonna tie it up. I knew they were gonna tie it up. Heck, I watched him do it the other night. And Mike Smith, dude, he's so bad. Like, please, thank you. Thank goodness the Leafs didn't get shut up by Mike Smith. Forget the numbers. Like, I've been watching the Flames this season. Holy! I watched the Flames game against Washington, where, granted, they look better than it did against Pittsburgh. How could they possibly not? Mike Smith spent half of the third period on his stomach. And where was he on this one? Yeah. Elliot and the panel were talking after the game about how the Flames were so much better defensively. Yeah, the Leafs made it easy for him. Calgary was getting their sticks in the way. Yeah, because the Leafs kept trying the cross crease, cross slot, whatever pass to get Smith to sprawl out and end up on his face again. But when you got no shots in the third period, dude, just aim it low. Aim any garbage at the net and hope for a rebound. You might get the same result. Now, I was excited for them to tie it. I wanted to see that. I wanted to see them somehow irk out a win and, and maybe we even get overtime and that's always exciting. But another part of me was like, no, no. What lesson would they learn? Winning with a performance like this, let them rot. And then sure enough, Zach Hyman, oh my goodness, he bangs it home. Yes, and I'm not even looking at the TV, I'm smacking the floor, I'm so happy. I allowed myself to be that happy. And then I see Hyman's confused, I'm like, what? The whistle goes, what? They show the replay, it beat Mike Smith. It did not beat the Nets. And since it did not go in the Nets and Mike Smith's job is to guard the net, I suppose it didn't beat him either. And part of me thought, Good. What a perfect metaphor for this game. Because pucks were rolling on guys all night. Did Levo tape his stick? But part of me, you know what I saw on the face of the Leafs there when they scored that goal? It wasn't just happiness, euphoria. Yeah, boys, let's go. It was a little bit of childish, mischievous glee. Like, ha ha, we got away with one. You thought. And the whole team gets humiliated on national television as the goal that obviously was not is disallowed. The Flames score an empty netter. Michael Froelich with six seconds left. They lose 3-1. They should have lost 7-0. Why did I choose 7-0 when 
when 9-1 was right there. I'm not even turning in a good performance. Don't you dare blame it on the fact that Austin Matthews is out of the lineup. Don't you dare blame it on the fact that Willie is out of the lineup. The Leafs had a great hard-working comeback win against the Jets just a couple days ago without Matthews or Willie. But in this one, they were careless disinterested and aloof. I want to yell and scream about Andreas Janssen only getting seven minutes, but I don't know how many times in those seven minutes he was caught flat-footed. I hope after Babcock skates them through the floor of Scotiabank Arena, all he does is make the Leafs do passing drills. Oh my goodness, only passing drills. Actually make a pass. There needs to be some sort of payment for that. There needs to be payment. Receipts. I don't care if they were eight and three. They're still eight and four. It's still good. I am mad at this team for that game, that absolute farce of a game. I hope they still Step in a puddle with socks on. I hope they remove their socks and step on a Lego. I hope after this game the team went out and ordered nachos and all their chips were soggy. Oh, heavens me, I, I forgot. Hey, Flames fans, if I were you, I'd be looking up what to get your Leaf fan friends for Christmas. Heck, Christmas is too far away. Just go out and get them something nice. As if the Leafs just let the Flames back into this season. Holy crap, that was terrible. I didn't even think the Flames looked that good in this game. The game was right there for the taking and the Leafs gave it to them. But you know what? I would feel good because you were the better team. The Flames were the better team and they were rewarded for for it, as they should be. What's that saying? I don't have to outrun the bear, I just have to outrun you. The Flames outran the Leafs. Anderson stops 25 of 26, huge game for him. Flames win a game? What a confidence boost, and you deserve it, or at very least, you deserved it more than the Leafs did. That's how I'd feel if I were you. Man, I made this video today, it's up on the Sportsnet YouTube channel, about the Austin Matthews injury, and how, yeah, it's obviously awful. He's gonna be out a month, 14, 15 games, something like that, and it's bad. It's not, it's obviously not good that arguably the Leafs' best player is out of the lineup. Not much argument, dude was on pace for like, what, 75 goals? But I argued that the sky is not falling. They won games without him last year. I think it was 11-7-2, and was that the record? But I distinctly remember them being better than that. Questions because my throat is sore. Should we be reacting like this or like this? I think I answered your question with the first however many minutes of this video. Like, for real, the Leafs didn't call anyone up because they have back-to-back -back games at home and a couple days off, and it, it's probably better cap savings that way. Dude, whatever. Call someone up who gives a damn. Trevor Moore, I don't care. Anybody. When the broadcast kept harping on Monaghan's eight-game goalless drought, was there a 100% chance or a 200% chance that he would eventually snap it against the Leafs. Hey, there's another Flames if I were you. Monaghan scored. You know, when I first heard them say it, I still only put the Flames' chances at about 69%, but as the game wore on, it became all too apparent that their chances were closer to 420%. Discuss. What? That's, that's not even a question. Discuss. What, what's she dressed up as? Oh, Blue from Blue's Clues, and I guess she's holding... What? I think that's enough internet for today. Okay, fine, a few more. What is the alternate reality like where Zach Hyman did score and I am not sad? Well, the reality's good for you because you're not sad. The reality for me, of course, would be bad. Or I guess at least very different. Because that would mean good things consistently happen to the Leafs all the time. So I, I certainly wouldn't have a YouTube channel to talk about it. I assume I'd probably be much happier, less neurotic, and still work at the zoo. Sorry, I just need to go back and- No, that's the original- That's not even- Why would you Photoshop that? I'm upset. This isn't even a question. Uh, okay, um, okay, that's actually kind of funny. I don't make me laugh. I'm trying to be mad. Are you in? Yes, I am. And if the Leafs are ever gonna win anything, they need to be too. And if they find anyone who's not in, they gotta find a way to get them out. I recently said that the Leafs have a Monday Tuesday back to back. Uh, that was wrong. Connor Carrick, Roman Polak, and the Dallas Stars visit Toronto on Thursday. I assume Mike Babcock will put Travis Dermott back in the lineup. And I assume all guys in the lineup not named Travis Dermott will put in a much better effort. At least that's what a contender would do, because that's what I was told this team would be. Prove it. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. I smell. I'm I'm sweating. I've been yelling so much. Podcast schedule for this week, by the way, is Wednesday, Friday. Friday, I'm working on a guest, a big one.